Thank you for tuning into the Walk in Truth Radio Network broadcast. Grab your Bible, get settled, and let's walk through the Word of God together. Let us now reason together and listen to see what God is saying to us today. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. God today for this day that we can come celebrate God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We know that he had died for us that we may come worship him in spirit and truth and we welcome you to the Walk in True Christian Fellowship Church uh, worship service. Amen. We're still doing an abbreviated service but we hope that you'll hear something today that will encourage you, inspire you, and uplift you and for those who want to say maybe you'll just ask that question. What must I do to be saved? So we're going to get started, to get started, but we're going to give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Let's do that. Amen. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Yeah. God is good with you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Because we love our King Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to have scripture and prayer from Deacon Marvin. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Glorious Good morning. day. You'll rejoice in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Let us first pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we all ask you, whether we either understand what's going on or not, Heavenly Father, we ask you for extra strength, Heavenly Father, through these hard times and days, Heavenly Father, to give help to one another, Heavenly Father, to seek out the help to give, Heavenly Father, not just wait on somebody to ask for the help, Heavenly Father. Strengthen our minds, Heavenly Father, no matter what we have to endure, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord, of all Lords, Heavenly Father, the only Lord, we ask you for healing powers, Heavenly Father, to heal ourselves, to help heal others with more kind words and kind, just care for one another, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you for providing for all of us, Heavenly Father. Whether we appreciate it or not, Heavenly Father, we do know mm -hmm. where our strength comes from and our prayers come from, Heavenly Father. And we just, and our help as well. Dear Heavenly Father, help those to reach you, Heavenly Father. Help us help those to reach you. We are the light, Heavenly Father, but we're having a hard time, some of us, Heavenly Father. So strengthen us through our walk, Heavenly Father, so we can help those reach you, Heavenly Father. They need you as well as we do, Heavenly Father. Reach those who are third this sick, Heavenly Father, who are in jail and in prison, Heavenly Father. Help them come out in a better life and a better heart and a better understanding of who you are. Thank you for feeding us with the spiritual Heavenly Father that is well needed in this earth right now. Strengthen us no matter where we're at, no matter what day it is. Just let us push forward to look for you, to seek you, Heavenly Father, to depend on you, and to give you all the glory in our lives. In your Son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. 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 I'd like to read from Galatians 6, 1 through 10. I've been reading this for the past couple of days, and I tried to change it up, but... This is what it needs to be said. Amen. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spiritual of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he ha have enjoying himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto the teacher in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whosoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Mm -hmm. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, mm -hmm. as we have therefore opportunity. Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 And now we're going to have our, this is one of the most enjoyable times of service for me, 
It was said uh, as we enjoyed ourselves at the Misfits of Jesus last night that when this person speaks, everybody just feels so good. And that's a great thing that you can speak a word that's so encouraging that all your problems just drop away for a few minutes. Amen. 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 And, and, and I, I think we're blessed, you know, um, to have uh, Minister Karen do what she does for us. Amen. 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 We love her exaltation. No matter what I'm going through, as I'm sitting there waiting to speak, whatever I'm going through, it dissipates when I listen to her. Mm. So I hope that you really listen to what her heart and what she has to say. It's in Jesus' name that I'm going to call her. Minister Karen, come do what you do. Crow like you crow. Amen. 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 what 
we need. He knows everything about us. And when we start realizing that he already know when we're going to mess up, he already know these things. Right. So that's why I always say, stop hiding. Stop trying to keep secret. Because he sees everything. I ain't got to know. But he sees everything. Right. But when you mess up, just say, Lord, please forgive me. Yes. Just repent yes. and praise him in the midst of that. Yes, Lord. That's all he wants. He wants us to praise. He wants us to worship him. Because in him, we have the power. That's right. We have the power to change yes. things. Yes. The way you live, the things that you're doing that you're not supposed to be doing. I ain't trying to call you out. Because I got some things in me that's being cleaned up. So who am I? You know what I'm saying? But I want to let you know, even though I have these things going on, I can praise him in the midst of it. See, because that's what it's all about. He said, you do the work for me, I clean it up. You do the work for me, those who are, who are struggling, I'll take care of that. So I'm learning. In spite of all this stuff that's around me, it's got to step back. Because my job is to praise the Lord, encourage people, and lift people up. Like Mama just read the scripture. Those of you who are weak, we who are strong, we're supposed to lift them up. Even though I'm weak sometimes, but when I get up here and open my mouth, I know the Lord got my back. He said he with me every step that I take, every move that I make, every corner that I turn. He with me. He'll, he said he'll never leave me or forsake me. You see, that's what you got to start believing. He is in you. Yes. He resides in you. Yes. The Holy Spirit is in you. So when you move to the left, what? he's right there. When you move to the right, he's what? right there. Yes. When you step back, he right there pushing you forward. Oh, See, we serve a mighty God. And we got to realize that as long as the Holy Spirit is residing in you, you have the power to move the mountain that's standing your way. Mm -hmm. Like last night, I told you, sometimes you, the mountain too hard to climb. Sometimes you got to walk around it. Come on. Walk around it and keep moving. Because our job is to walk in faith. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Thursday night is the prayer meeting. Thursday night at 7 o'clock is the prayer meeting. And I know that. Um, and six thirty, I was ready for it. Somewhere between six thirty-one and seven o'clock, something happened, and um, I was just unavailable for the call, and I missed the opportunity to hear everybody's voice, and um, missed the opportunity to be obedient to my pastor because he texted me. So I just I missed out on something, and I was just because I was unavailable for it. And I thought about that and thought about a song that I wanted to bring. And I just thought about being available to God mm, come on. when when he need when he wants us. He yeah. always wants us. Mm -hmm. He can always use us. Mm -hmm. And we just need not forget that. I forgot the phone call. Phone call come every week. But I'm I d I am don't want to miss it anymore, you know? Come on. So come on. Yeah. we just need to think about things like that and focus on being available, staying available, yeah. making ourselves available for yeah. God. That's right. You gave me my hands to reach out to man, to show him your love and your perfect plan. You gave I can hear the cries of sinners, but cannot wipe away their tears. You gave me my voice to speak your word, to sing all your praises to those who've never my eyes I see a need for more availability. I've seen hearts that have been broken, 
so many people to be free. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Do use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say that my storage is empty and I am available to you. Now I'm giving back to you all the tools you gave to me. My hands, my ears, my voice, my eyes, so you can use them as you please. I've emptied out my cup so that you can fill me up. I am free and I just want to be more available to you. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say that my storage is empty and I am available. My Steve, I want you to uh, read verses 17, 5, and uh, I'll start off with 5, it's, and then you can 6. It says, Thus saith the Lord. When you get it, say amen. 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 It says, Thus saith the Lord. That means he's about to say something real important. Hmm. Thus saith the Lord. Cursed is the man who trusts in man. Hmm. 
and makes his flesh his strength. Yeah. Trust in the man, curse is the man who trusts in man and makes his flesh his strength. What you saw when they were singing and Karen was exhorting was these women decided to make the Lord their strength. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lord. And not their flesh. Whose heart turns away from the Lord. A lot of times, what happens with us is so subtle. Mm. We get saved, we get excited, and then we get ghost. Mm. Uh huh. Oh, Come on. We say that we want to commit to God, but like Frida said in her honesty, something comes in the way. Well, the issue is not the something that comes in the way, it's the attitude towards your Lord. All right. You're not evil, you're not bad, but the Lord is not our priority. Everything else becomes our priority because we believe everything else is important. Our entertainment becomes our priority, what we think we want to do becomes our priority, but this scripture tells us that that man is cursed who trusts in man, who counts on man, and turns his back on the Lord. Mm. Oftentimes, we live our lives in a position to whereas the things that are more important to us than the Lord, what we do is we don't bring the Lord with us, as Karen was saying, what we do is leave him behind. Mm -hmm. And normally when we leave, what I've learned over this time walking with the Lord, when I leave him behind, I have a limited success. I'm not as successful as when I bring the Lord that I say that I love with me. That's right. I'm not as fruitful as I could be if I don't bring the Lord that's supposed to never leave me nor forsake me, but I will leave him and forsake him. Mm -hmm. right. It's quite fascinating to me that, that in the disposition of who I am as a man and who we are as people of God, a lot of times we just forget how good God is. That's right. And when we forget how good God is in our day-to-day -day life, We'll turn our back on him and we'll say, Lord, you know what? Thank you, but you know what? I'll handle this myself. Mm -hmm. And that'd be the main thing that the Lord said, I wanted to be in there with you. Mm -hmm. I want to guide you through that. I've slipped up so many times and so probably of you when we just said, you know, Lord, we don't need you to help us right now. We didn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. One plus one is two. Mm -hmm. But see, the Lord says one plus one may be two for you, but you know, I can make one and one and make four. Come right. On. The Lord can multiply Come on. Come on. Come while we still trying to add together. Lord, so I had more for you if you would have took me with you so I can show you how good I am. Yes. And then you would give me the glory versus you getting the glory. Yes. Too many times as we walk with God and deal with the things of God, we say things to whereas we get the glory. As I was discussing with a young man yesterday, I asked him, I said, if you die today, what are you going to tell God that would be good enough to get you in heaven? <laughs> and this is what I mean. And, and I want you to understand the sincerity and the honesty was, I would say, he died for me, then I died for him. Mm. I said, hold on now, let me, let me get this straight. You think your death is equal to Jesus' death? So that he owe you heaven because you're dead? I said, you're already born and sin and shaped to the iniquity. You're already dead. Your relationship with God is not based upon you dying. It's upon him dying. See, he's trusting his goodness and what he can bring to the table. Say, look, Lord, I've died for you, so you owe me heaven. Well, we can never make God the one who owes us. That's right. We could never substitute our sinning and our death in sinning to what he did on the cross for us. But he said it with such sincerity. And it made me think about myself. What would I say? See, we need to examine ourselves to make sure we're in the faith. And I said, you know what I would say? I don't offer nothing. He did it all. Yeah. Yeah. There's 
nothing I can claim in my flesh that I can put before God to deserve the goodness in his heaven and his grace. Because he died and paid for all of that. And through his grace, I understand that there's nothing that I bring to the table that I can say, hey, look, hey, I, I got money, I got, I got prestige, I got education. And God said, that's good enough. Even my death itself is not good enough. Good enough. Yeah. That's right. So if my death is not good enough and my life is not good enough, what do I have? I have hope in him. All right. I have hope in the promised Holy Spirit that he sent to me to guide me into this knowledge of understanding. It's not him. It's Christ in me, the hope of my glory. Yeah. Holy opportunities. Mm -hmm. Peace experiences. Holy opportunities, peace experiences. Through the hope of God, I get peace. Mm. There's a calmness that comes over me mm -hmm. that lets me stand and wish stand. Mm, amen. 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 Because the shoes of the gospel are on my feet. Right. And I'm anchored to the gospel. Yes. This storm has showed me a lie. You could be the strongest tree and be the tallest tree in the neighborhood. But you know what? If it ain't anchored, All right. when that wind blows, you coming down. <clears throat> but it's when we wrap ourselves and anchor ourselves to the gospels that we can withstand and stand some more. That no matter what the devil throws at us, we don't rely on our flesh because we don't want to be cursed like the tree that's toppled over. See, too many times our roots run deep in religion, but not tied to the gospel. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. We've been in church a long time. Some of y'all been in church all your life. Your roots run deep because when anybody talks to you about your relationship to God, you start going into your historical narrative of where you been and where you, who's your daddy in church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're going to start telling me how you affiliated with the church that was 100 years old. Mm. But Jesus don't care nothing about that. Right. Right. Jesus want to know, are you attached to the true vine? That's right. uh -huh. Are you attached to me? Are you abiding in me? Are you staying with me? Go ahead, Steve. Read verse 6. He is like a shrub in the desert mm. and shall not see any good thing, any good kind. So he's like a shrub in the desert. The desert dries him up. See, when you rely on yourself, you're going to eventually run out of steam. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. When it comes to this walk with God, you can't walk in your own power. Mm -hmm. You have to have a supernatural power. Yes. You have to have a power that people can't see. And like I said last night, I wish we had a uniform to recognize who we are. But it's not the uniform that will make us. It's our character as we live out our life through suffering. And life. See, when people see how well we suffer, then they know that ain't, that ain't the flesh. That's the Lord. When they see us stand on principles and don't compromise the gospel and be committed and accountable and responsible to this word and how we live our lives, People see that we're not cursed. What they see is soldiers. All right. In the army of the Lord, they Come see that, right. that, 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 that we are uniquely positioned to be the ones to be the ambassadors in a dying world to tell somebody who's dying how they can be alive. Yes. But then there's the blessed man who trusts in God. Read the next verse. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness mm -hmm. in an uninhabitable salt land. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Wait. Whose trust is in the Lord. Whose trust is in the Lord. See, you're only blessed when you trust in God. You're cursed if you trust in yourself. The tailor to men. The tailor who we are. There was a time that we were cursed. When we trusted in our own selves, our own strengths, our own ways, our own thoughts, our own philosophies, our own education. Everything was about me, mine, I. Yeah. But now we trust in the Lord. And because we trust in the Lord, we're blessed. But trusting the Lord don't mean that we're blindly trusting the Lord. The Lord has proved himself trustworthy. Yes, he has. See, people think that we just trust in some kind of fictitious character. No, no. We trust in the Lord and say, let there be light. <laughs> So every time the sun come up, I say, see, that's why we trust them. Amen. Every time the stars rise, I say, that's why we trust them. 
Every time a flower grows from the ground, that's why we trust them. Because you can't tell me how that's grown without the Lord. Amen. As I get older, my spirit gets stronger. That's why I trust him. Because no matter how much I decay, my spirit can grow. Matter of fact, my spirit grows better as I decay. I'm getting better like a fine wine. All the saints are getting better like fine wine. Just when you think we're down and out, we'll say something until we're up and coming. A saint is always up and coming. We never down and out. You may see us buckle, but we ain't going to break. Read. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes. Mm. Mm. Does not fear when he see we don't care when the heat coming. He coming. Yeah. Yeah. Was he trouble, trials, tribulations, problems, mm -hmm. things, people, places? Mm -hmm. Somebody sitting next to you? Mm -hmm. Somebody far from you? Mm -hmm. The heat of life is coming. But see, when we trust in the Lord, we can withstand and stand and stand some more because we are clothed in righteousness. Because you are clothed in righteousness, with your robe of righteousness, with your garments, with your helmets, with your shields, with the full armor of God, you don't have to worry about if you can withstand, all you need to do is stand. Yes. Mm -hmm. The issue comes into how do we stand? Be fully dressed. How do I stand? How do I not rely on my flesh? I think I can fight it. I think I can deal with it. But I found out the greatest way to deal with something is through grace. Yeah. You say, what you mean, Pastor? Do you mean graceful? No, 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 no. I mean grace. grace. That's it. I mean that thing that God gives us that empowers us when we run out of steam. Mm -hmm. It's grace. But the only way you can activate the grace and appreciate the grace is to trust God of the grace That's right. that was afforded to you at Calvary. We understand he had to go through that to give grace to us. Grace came with a cost. It cost him his, his life. But then it gave us eternal life. That when we, we were buried with him, it says, and we were raised with him. And we're sitting in heavenly places with him. He sees us complete. Colossians 2 and 9 tells us that the fullness of the, of, of the Godhead was dwelling bodily within him. And now he fills us up with the Spirit of God. The promised Holy Spirit that he promised Abraham. The issue is never the law. The issue is, are you going to be held to the law when you're held to a higher standard of grace? Grace is by the way we live. Grace is how we move forward. It's that power unseen in us that, that makes us move forward and make us a, a force to be reckoned with in this dying world. Mm -hmm. You are grace ambassadors. Mm -hmm. huh. That's what the Bible says. You are grace ambassadors. You are the ambassadors of, of the most high God and you are his body. You don't have to build the kingdom. You already in the kingdom. Because it hit me. Everybody talks about kingdom, 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 kingdom. As if his body going to be gone from his head. Mm -hmm. If I'm part of his body and he is my head as the church. Mm -hmm. When he decides to deal with his kingdom. Aren't I going to be, am I not going to be there since I'm part of his body? Or is he going to say, you know what, I'm going to leave my body over here and I'm going to deal with the people over here. No, you're already in the kingdom. Come on, son. You've already been getting access. Yeah. You've already been set free from the law. Come on. Come on. You got in the kingdom by grace through faith, which was not on your own, but a free gift from God. So you take the gift of God when you think you have to work for it. You dis, you, you, you take it and push it aside. What happens is you work it on your own strength and then what you say what God did didn't work. Mm, 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 mm. What he did for you didn't work. But I'm telling you, saints of God, you don't want to live under a curse of your own works. Right. You want to power the grace that he gave us at Calvary. Yes. Go to Galatians, chapter 3. And uh, I, guess, I guess I do want to start with verse 1. 
Um, last night we had fun with it out of the CEV, but we're going to read it out of ESV <laughs> today. Amen. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Start at verse 1 and, and keep reading until I tell you to stop. Go ahead. Oh, foolish Galatians, mm -hmm. who has bewitched you? Mm -hmm. It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed and cruci as crucified. Okay, so he was publicly portrayed as crucified. What Paul is saying is, he's writing back to the Galatians because of the incident that happened in Galatians chapter 2. We all know, I'm not going to go over that. But he's writing back to them, reminding them that in his, in his opening, he said, I can't believe that you walked away from what I gave you, that empowered you. And he, he warned them that if anybody preach any other gospel other than the gospel that I preach, let them be accursed. Well, we just read that a man is cursed by counting on himself. So if you preach a gospel where it's more, you're more important than the God of the gospel, then you're cursed. Because you're relying on self. See, there is a self gospel that's not a gospel. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can turn on TBN and hear it every time you want to. It's all about you. God wants you healthy, wealthy, wise, and happy. No sacrifice, no sin. No salvation. See, you can't deal with salvation until you deal with sin. Come on. Because if you don't deal with sin, what are you being saved from? Oh. All right, come, on. Uh, uh, come, on. come on. There's no need for salvation if it's all about me being happy. Mm. Well, we don't want to deal with that because it makes people uncomfortable. But see, that you foolish Galatians in the CEV version is say, you stupid Galatians. When I did it last night, I talked about the stupid Galatians. See, when I say you foolish, that don't even bother you. But if I call you stupid, you're ready to fight. <laughs> so I want to be abrasive. I want to say, yeah, sometimes we stupid. Because cursed people do stupid stuff. Our flesh calls us to do stupid stuff. Our flesh calls us to wither and turn away from God. But when we walk in the spirit, when we stay with God, we can withstand the heat of the world, the pressure of the world. And sometimes the heat is not negative things or, or pressure things. It's just that society puts that pressure on you like, don't you want to be like us? Mm -hmm. The culture say, you know, it's all right. Dress like you want to dress. Look like you want to look. We should accept, everybody should accept you. Do what you want to do. Drink as much as you want to drink. Eat as much as you want to eat. Be as sick as you want to be. As long as you're happy. Come on, Doc. Do what you want to do. Trust in yourself because there's only one you. <laughs> Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you'll be successful. And there is some relative truth to that, but it's relative truth. Meaning, it's only good for the moment. That's right. It's not good for eternity. Come on. You can't take self-esteem into eternity. All right. <laughs> he says he resists the proud and exalts the humble. Yeah. So how can it be about you when it's supposed to be about him? All right. Amen. Read. Let me ask you only this. Let's examine you. Did you receive the spirit by works of the of the law? Or by hearing with faith. We heard, we received it by hearing of faith. Right. Faith come by hearing, hearing come by the word of God. That's how we receive the spirit of God. We hear the gospel. It's not a religious activity that you practice to which you come into the kingdom and become the body of Christ. It's by believing by faith. Now skip down to verse 6. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. Stop. Right there. It was accounted to Abraham as to be righteous because he trusted God. We go back to 17. It's like that tree. 17 tells us it's the tree. That's planted by the water. 17, 7, and 8 says it's a tree that's planted by the water. And the tree has roots and it bears fruit. See, Abraham trusted God. He planted himself in God and he became the fruit of God. It was accounted to him as righteousness because he told him, I want you to leave where you at and go to some place 
But I'll tell you when you get there. When Abraham got up, even though he didn't do it perfect, he was covered by the grace of God because he stepped out on faith. The Bible clearly teaches us that it's impossible to please God without faith. A lot of you worry about doing wrong and doing right. And I say, don't worry about that. As long as you're doing what you believe to be right by faith. And if it's wrong, God will correct you. But if you're doing it under your flesh and think it's faith, then God will chastise you. See, it can look the same. Because what you'll do is you'll throw faith on something that's particularly fleshly. That's why the Bible says that when we pray, we pray amiss because we pray into our passions, into our flesh. You want fleshly things, not godly things. How does it glorify God that you get a call? All right. I mean, how does it glorify God that you get more stuff? Can God use the car? Yes, but it doesn't necessarily glorify God for him to give you more material wealth. What glorifies God is in the midst of the storm, you stand up and say, it's raining. And let the rain come because I'm not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You glorify God is when your friends and family are going through something and you tell them about the goodness of God that leads to repentance. That's how you glorify God. Abraham was a man who was a pure heathen. And God selected a pure heathen, not when he became a Jew, before he became a Jew. And the promise was to him as a Gentile, not as a Jew. And what did he promise? He promised that he make his name great. He promised that he would receive, that through him, the Savior would come, the seed one would come, which was Jesus Christ. And all those who came in by faith, whether Jew or Gentile, would be the sons of God. We are not the sons and daughters of God through a bloodline lineage. We're sons of God through a bloodline vault. That's right. We believe in the shed blood of Christ. Yeah. So we come in by faith. Yeah. And faith is stronger than bloodline. Mm -hmm. But faith is not stronger than the blood that was spilt that we believe in. Mm -hmm. That cleanses us of all sins. That atone for us. We live vicariously in Jesus through what he has done for us and we don't count on our own righteousness and it is a righteousness that exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees. The Pharisees had a righteousness that was of the law but what we have is a greater righteousness based upon faith and grace. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no law that can outgrace grace. <laughs> Come on God. Come on. <laughs> Only thing the law could do is condemned because it couldn't let us go because we were sinners. The wages of our sin brought about a death. So the law was there to point out the fact that we are transgressing against him and it was supposed to drive us to our knees and say, oh Lord, what a wretched man that I am, a woman that I am, who can save me from this death? God can save me from the death. How is he going to save me? He's going to become that blemished lamb from all those rituals. He's going. He's the real while they practice the shadow, he was the real was getting ready to be made in fashion and form to be the one slain lamb for all sin, for all time, for all people who believe. Yes. Amen. So what do I bring to the table? I'm back at that. I don't bring anything. There's nothing I can do when it comes to God. When it comes to the tone. When it comes to my salvation, there's no denomination that I can belong to that's holy enough to carry his holy name. Hmm. There's not a building I can go to that encompasses me being in him and him in me. He said that my heart is not circumcised by man, but by hands of, of his holy hands. The circumcision of the heart and not the flesh. And the heart that is circumcised by God works a renewed mind that is promoted by God. You have a renewed mind. You think upon these things, what is pure, what is lovely, what is good, what is honest, what is perfect. And you just be truthful with God. There's no reason to hide your flaws. That's right. He already knows. <clears throat> He picked you while you was flawed. <laughs> and a lot of people think 
I have to be a certain way to come to church. All you have to be is a sinner. And that's what we all are. We are sinners saved by grace, and sinners are saved by grace and now called saints. He gives you a new name. Sinners saved by grace, your name is now saint. And he never takes that back from you. Even when you fall short. Because that grace is so powerful, wherever you fall short, it stands you up. There's a great philosopher, Mr. Haney, he said this. He said, some of us are like a short man under a tall ladder. Now, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but what I think it means is this. Sometimes, when we fall short, the ladder looks so tall, it looks like we can't climb it and we can't under our own power, but God will help us. He'll boost us up. He'll put us in the right position that we can climb and go higher. But all I have to do is admit that I can't do it. The day I said I couldn't, he said I will. He, uh, I mean, I got that me. The day I said that I'm not, he said, I'll do it. I said, Lord, well, I can't, I, I, I'm too short, he said, but I'm too tall. He said, I said, I'm not too smart. He said, I have all knowledge. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Lord. He said, he said, I say, he said, I say, well, well, I can give you some more stuff, but look like you're gonna say what you are versus what I am. He said, that's when you're gonna realize who mm. I am, because I'm the great I am. Yes. Come on, man. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Lord. See, the Lord make it plain to me in his word. Mm. If he's the great I am, mm. there's nothing greater than him. That's right. So wherever I come, I'm gonna be short of the great I am. But because I humble myself to the great I am, he will exalt me to heights I could never imagine. I just want to talk to y'all for a minute today about two different kind of men and two different kind of women. There are those of us who are still battling and relying on our flesh. That's just a natural thing. And then there's those of us who are a little further down. We're not much further down the line. Just a little further down the line. And every now and then you catch us at the right moment, we'll revert right back to our flesh. That's mm -hmm. right. But the good thing about God is he's awfully forgiving. Yes. yes. Marvin read it perfectly. Yes. When the brother's caught in the fault, don't always think of something that's so true. Just think of when he's living in his flesh sometimes. <laughs> when he's not following God sometimes. When he says a couple of curse words sometimes. <laughs> when he got heated. Mm -hmm. You who are spiritual, I understand it. We're still maturing. Yes. I don't put you down. I build you up. Yes. If you remit, if you're willing to confess your sins, it says what? He's faithful to forgive you. And if he's faithful to forgive you, let me not be the one who gets in the way. Amen. Peter had to learn that. We talked about that last night. Peter said, who am I to get in God's way? We do it all the time. <laughs> Because we have our own preferences. We have our own prejudices. We have our partialities, which are all of the flesh. When you're so preferenced, so, so partial, so prejudiced, that's all about flesh. Mm -hmm. But when you're willing to, to submit yourself to God, you'll find out that you don't need that anymore. Uh -huh. Because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And what he gives you is enough. He has filled you up with this love that you need to pour out to other people. Mm -hmm. So my life becomes less about me. And he said something that in Galatians. He said, it's not me that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. Hallelujah. And as Christ lives in me, he loves. And as I learn to love like Christ, I love others. And I tend not to judge others. Now, I don't want you to think that you don't judge good and evil because you're always doing that. But you never condemn people. Because if you condemn them, they don't have any hope. Mm. Come on, God. But if you tell them and get them convicted, you might get them saved. Amen. So what am I saying? I'm wrapping this up. All I'm saying to the saints of God, the people who listen to this stuff is, you got to trust God. In all your ways. Lean not unto your own understanding. Yeah. And this God that we trust in will guide your path. We always say in this church, he'll be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. And he will not. He's always there, like Karen said, 
in front of you, behind you, going before you, fighting your battles before you even get there, making room for you, opening doors for you, closing doors that you shouldn't go through. God is there in our lives because we're part of his body. He can do everything like Karen said, but what? Fail. So if he can't fail, why don't you step out with faith and trust him? Amen. You gain trust in God by walking with him. Amen. And we walk through his word. That's how we learn to trust God. This is not some osmosis thing that we got to bring down and into the atmosphere. No, we got everything we need right here in these scriptures. That's right. To trust God. Every kind of story you could possibly think of, some of the best soap operas could be written out of the scriptures. That's right. I want to encourage you to read Acts 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Man, that is, a, that is an awesome narrative. Acts 10 through 15. Just read it and just think about it. As you watch the journey of Peter from law into grace, Paul tried to help him along. And God will put circumstances and have you have experiences to which you have a choice. Either you're going to trust God or you're going to trust in yourself. You're going to trust what you used to know or you're going to trust what God has given you now. God wants to give you more light, but you have to live up to the light he's giving you. That's right. And living up to the light he's giving you starts with trusting him, believing in him, honoring him. Praising him, praying to him, and loving the people. Because he said, you'll know that they'll know that we are his disciples by the way we love each other. So continue to love each other, continue to trust God, continue to believe in God, and live for God. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you today. <sighs> yeah, thank you, Lord, for making us available. Sometimes our storage is empty. But Lord, you will fill it up. Lord, my heart is full for many reasons. Not full of pain, but full of joy. That you're such a good God. Lord, you washed over each and every one of us all of our lives and brought us together. You knew that we would be together before the foundation of the earth. Your plan is going forward and you're not slow. Lord, your blessings go forward because we trust you. Even though the heat may come, we don't worry because we know you're a good God and you reward those who diligently seek you. So Lord, as we seek you through your word, continue to pour in us your spirit. Continue to show us how to stir up the gift, which is the Holy Spirit in us. Lord, we love you We thank you. And bless every church that calls upon the name of Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Yes. Whether it be in America and whether it be in Africa, Lord. Bless Timothy, our church in Kenya, who planted another church in Kenya. Yes. Lord, bless the pastors that I talked to in Pakistan, Lord. Bless our little satellite church in Canada, Lord Father God, as they continue to follow the walking truth way, which is the biblical way. Lord, bless the teachers and the members and the disciples and all those who affiliated with us. Bless Pastor Gaskin, who has been a most gracious host in his church. Lord, continue to unify your body the only way that you can, and bless us as we go out every day. Look after our children and protect our minds. Look after all the marriages that are in the church, in the body of Christ. And look after the same way you put your Lord, our ailments are our ailments. Lord, we trust you that you will deal with them as we ask. But Lord, we know that we trust you. And whatever you decide, that your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Again, I want to thank all of you for coming. And I always want you to be encouraged, blessed, and be at peace. And always remember what? Walk in truth. Thank you for listening. We worship at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ Building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri 63114. Times of worship, 8.30 on Sunday, Bible study 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Tuesday. All are welcome and thank you for considering us as your place of worship. Thank you for listening to the Walk in Truth Radio Network broadcast. If this message has been a blessing to you, consider donating on your favorite platform. You can donate by looking in the description box and picking your favorite platform of choice, Venmo, Cash App or PayPal. Continue listening. And your prayers are needed, welcomed and appreciated.